Hello everyone, um, welcome to my new series of the actual exams. If you are new to my channel, check out my other series for subject A211, uh, Financial Maths. So in this series, we'll be going through the content of subject A213, which is called Contingencies. It is a very technical subject and very challenging at the same time. Right? So I've written it before in the first session of 2022 and unfortunately it didn't go well so i'm doing this series in preparation for my next attempt this coming session in october um hopefully it will go well this time uh if it doesn't i guess aluta continua <laughs> we'll try again next year um yeah these exams are something else guys sure um and i'm a bit worried for this one because i started my preparations late since i've recently changed jobs jobs and cities and it sometimes take a bit of time to adjust well to a, a new environment you know so yeah but we are here now and it is what it is um it's what we signed up for i guess um yeah i bet most, most of us uh, who are in this actual journey we were so excited when we started and uh, don't be excited it doesn't need chance takers. It doesn't need people who like nice type, nice cities. It doesn't need that. It doesn't need people who get shaken easy. It doesn't need people who become amoebas in the process and they become shapeless and do not know what they represent. Uh, we must constantly remind ourselves why we started in the first place you know um yeah remember though those days like in varsity um when someone asks uh wh wh what are you studying you tell them with pride to go to i'm studying actual science um not knowing uh what of elite course and then um in your second year when they ask you'd kind of uh uh reduce the name of the course in in your response what i'm studying xi you know uh, keeping it cool because the course does give some heat from there onwards <laughs> yeah so um let's let's get on to the material so the first chapter in this course um so this subject is h13 as i've mentioned um the first chapter in the in the course is called the life table and this is a, a continuation of uh, concepts studied in a211 I think even with ASA, you can't take 8213 if you haven't passed 8211, not unless if you've registered to write both of them in the same session, which is probably not uh, a good idea according to my experience, especially if you, you also have other commitments like, like work. Writing more than one technical exam in one session can be very challenging. Right? So, okay, back to the subject. I was saying this is a continuation of. Um, a211 financial mathematics so in a211 we focused on valuing cash flows that are certain to occur an for example gives the present value of a payment of one at the end of each of the next n years where each payment will definitely occur now in this course we start to to value uncertain future cash flows such as those that are faced by a life insurance company these cash flows may depend on the survival or death of a policyholder or other uncertain future events such as sickness or early retirement. So the, the content of this course is mostly based on insurance con contracts and annuity contracts. So in the contract, the policyholder will agree to pay an amount or a series of amounts to the life insurance company. We call these amounts premiums. The premiums may be, may be paid on a regular basis, usually monthly, quarterly, or annually. These premiums uh, may also be paid as one single payment known as a single premium, right? So yeah, these premiums are seen as income by the, the insurance company. In return for these premiums, the insurance company will agree to pay an amount or amounts to the policyholder if a specified event occurs, right? So these amounts paid by the insurance company to the policyholder are called policy benefits and they are a liability for the insurance company. Okay, so the content of this subject covers contracts with a single policyholder and then later extends to 
the, extends the theory to two policyholders, right? Those are called joint life uh, contracts, okay? And then there's also a topic of uh, equations of value. That was sort of like briefly, there's a chapter on equations of value in subject A211. And then um, in this course, to be able to, to calculate the premiums for a life insurance company, um, or for a life insurance contract, we need to use an equation of value, right? A standard e equation of value um, is that the present value of income is equals to the present value of outgo, right? So from the point of view of an insurance company, income usually is in the form of premiums and outgo is in the form of policy benefits paid to policyholders, okay? So since these cash flows are not certain to occur, we need to consider the probability of them occurring. So to do this, we must uh, consider the expected present value rather than just the present value, right? So the equation of value then becomes the expected present value of income is equals to the expected present value of outgo, right? So um, in, in, in addition to these premiums, and the expected benefit payments to policyholders going out, the insurance company will also incur some expenses when writing up these policies, right? So we need to also consider that on the outgo side of our equation, right? And then other components that must be considered in our equation of value is the time value of money. Here we are talking about interest rates. And then we also need to consider the uncertainty of the future cash flows right so with this uncertainty of the future cash flows is when we bring in debt and survival probabilities of a, a given policy holder okay and then um, in the notes there's also a section called allowance for investment income so here they touch briefly on why premiums are usually paid in advance rather than in areas right this is done to, to protect the insurance company from having to pay a claim or policy benefits to a policyholder without actually receiving any premiums from that policyholder. So this would happen if premiums were paid in areas. The policyholder will receive cover for free. And insurance companies are basically saying, Fagima Luzobona, because there's nothing for Mahala here. Right? Um, and then there's also a mini section on assumptions, right? So when pricing insurance or annuity products, insurance companies make uh, a lot of assumptions. Since we're dealing with uncertainty here and we don't know what will happen exactly, assumptions have to be made, right? And then insurance companies do this by, um, they, do, they do this because they, they are concerned with, with finding a fair price for, for a life insurance company, for, for a life insurance contract or annuity contract, right? So they basically don't want to paint every say every policyholder with the same brush. So you'd find that if you take up life insurance and you are you are a smoker, you'd usually pay more in, in premiums uh, compared to someone who who's who, who's a non-smoker, right? Because they they assume that for a smoker, the probability of them dying and then the insurance company having to pay policy benefits is much higher than when a, a policyholder is a is a non-smoker so yeah that's when like assumptions sort of work and then earlier i mentioned um time value of money and survival probabilities yeah that's where assumptions come in um the time value of money part comes in when we assume that money can be invested or borrowed at some given rate of interest right in this course, we assume that the rate of interest is known um, upfront, right? So um, it is kind of um, known what interest rate we will use when we price these uh, policy contracts, okay? And then the, the debt and survival probabilities part comes in when we look at the TPX and TQX, as well as mu X, the force of mortality, right? So TPX is a survival probability and TQX uh, is a dead probability, if I can put it like that, okay? And then, yeah, 
So the way they define TPX is that they, it is the probability that a life aged X survives for at least another T S, right? So take um, TP50 for example. So that will be saying um, that will be the probability that a person who is 50 years old survives for another 10 years. That will be TP50. Okay, and then there's TQX, which is the which is defined as the probability that a life aged X dies within the next T years, right? And then if we take uh, 10Q50, for example, that would be saying <clears throat> a, a person who is aged 50 dies within the next 10 years. That's 10Q50, right? Um, we also need to note that um, the sum of these two probabilities will be equals to 1. So TPX plus TQX should give us 1. Since in the next T years, a person can either be dead or alive. Because um, if you are not in one of those two states, what else could be happening with you? Really? Right? So not unless if you're from a different planet or universe where other things are possible that we don't know of. Yeah, but on Earth, a person can either be dead or alive. That's why the sum of those two probabilities will give us one. Okay. And then um, mu x is the force of mortality. This one is a, is a bit tricky to understand and explain. Um, well, at least for me. Right. So the way I, the, the way I think of, uh, of it uh, is that mu x represents the probability that a life aged x dies instantly right like in a very short time interval right so a life aged x dying in a in the next minute for example would be mu x the force of mortality like we are forcing you to die <laughs> no yeah but mu x is just the probability of a person dying instantly a person dying at that same exact age so if you are 50 years old would be the probability of you like dying in the next couple of minutes yeah yeah but then uh, in the notes like uh, this is how they put it um so they say the force of mortality at exact exact age x plus x denotes um the annual rate of transfer between alive and dead at that exact age right so it is the annual rate at which people are dying at that exact age okay and then they do say that it's helpful to think of that probability by saying that um, it is the probability like that a life h x plus x plus s dying over the short time interval from when they are x plus s to x plus s plus a couple of minutes that the s there that's the the couple of minutes uh, I was kind of like talking about right and yeah so the force of mortality is just the probability that a life aged X dies instantly or in the next instant of time um, yeah okay I I think I'll end it here for this video uh, thank you for watching uh, if you enjoy this kind of content feel free to like and subscribe I'm also um, available on LinkedIn if you'd like to connect and be and be part of my network um, yeah and all the best uh, with your with your exams to those who are also writing in this session I hope it all goes well let us keep pushing okay cheers <laughs>